Hello, I'm Matteo, the Chief Mobile Opinionist here at Tech Travel Geeks. And whilst we continue to run the Tech Travel Geeks giveaway of a Nokia 1.4, I thought this would be a good time to do a side-by-side -side comparison between the Nokia 1.4, released at the beginning of 2021, and the original Nokia 1.3, which is the first one we did some extensive coverage of on the Tech Travel Geeks in 2020. Both are sub £100 smartphones available from Nokia, and in the UK you can buy them from a selection of network operators, stores, and more importantly, Amazon.co.uk. Right then, so sub £100 smartphones. Uh, actually, uh, they're both around about the £70 to £80 price range at the moment, if you're shopping around for one. So what does the price of a leather case and a charger for an iPhone get you in terms of smartphone? If you haven't already, I suggest you check out the long-term review of the Nokia 1.3 that we have on the Tech Travel Geeks YouTube channel. Um, overall, I thought this was a great device for the price, though performance wasn't great. So let's see side by side how it compares to the Nokia 1.4. Now, as you can see, the Nokia 1.4 is physically bigger. Whoops. It's physically bigger. And not only that, you can see there's a very different industrial design here. The key thing is obviously the camera module. On the Nokia 1.3, you have just the one camera. In this case, on the back of the Nokia 1.3, you have a single eight megapixel sensor. It's an autofocus one using phase detection or autofocus, but that's it. And because of the chipset in the device, it can only record video at 720. The Nokia 1.4 is pretty much the same. It has an 8 megapixel autofocus camera with a 2 megapixel macro camera, which is pretty useless. And it, again, because of the computing power limitations, it can only record video at 720. So that's the cameras. The other thing that st stands out on the back is the fact that the Nokia 1.4 has a fingerprint scanner on the back that allows you to lock and unlock your smartphone uh, with your fingerprint. The Nokia 1.3 just doesn't have that. So that's a big feature jump. I'd say the macro camera, as I said, is pretty useless. The fingerprint scanner is really, really good and it's very responsive in my opinion. The other thing is the industrial design. The Nokia 1.3 had a removable back and that's a very interesting subject. We did a how-to video on how to take the Nokia 1.3 back off. It's been very, very successful. The Nokia 1.4 doesn't have that problem because the back is not removable. You have your SIM tray and micro SD card expansion slot in the side where you need to use a SIM ejector tool, like most smartphones nowadays. Whereas with the Nokia 1.3, there is the slots for micro SD and, the, and, uh, and SIM card in underneath the back plate. In terms of design, um, at the front, they're very similar. Teardrop notches, 720p screen. Uh, at the front of the device, there is also the teardrop notch on both devices we're talking about uh, a very basic 5 megapixel camera here uh, it is capable of recording 720p video but i i would say that in terms of vlogging it's very shaky and it's not great quality overall but it does a job it can record video just try and not do it uh, into direct light so sources like the sun and more importantly in low light. Both devices on the left hand side have the Google Assistant button so you can use that to quickly access the Google Assistant. On the right hand side you have the power button and the volume rockers and that's pretty much it. Uh, oh yeah and on the bottom both devices have micro USB for charging so not great in 2021, but in this price range, we're willing to make an exception. And if we look at the top of, of the devices, both of them have the Courage board, the 3.5 meter audio jack. Right then, let's have a look at the software and what it's, it's like. 
they are two very different uh, smartphones in that respect because for some odd reason the Nokia 1.3 is a bit clunkier and a bit less uh, responsive in day-to-day -day use but it gets much more frequent software updates. So both these devices are running on Android 10 Go Edition. That's Google's cut-down version of Android for uh, devices with limited capabilities in terms of hardware. If we look at the system updates though, and this is really odd, but part of a trend that we've been seeing with Nokia, the 2020 model is updated to the 5th of June security patch. I'm recording this video on the 30th of June, 2021. So this is up to date in terms of security patches. The Nokia 1.4, on the other hand, is stuck on a February update, which is incredibly frustrating. We've seen this with the Nokia 5.4, 3.4, 2.4. They are definitely, the, the 0.4 uh, generation of Nokia devices are definitely not getting love from Nokia in terms of software updates. Whether that's the latest version of Android, currently that's Android 11, or security updates. But both of these devices are still running Android 10 Go Edition, which is a cut down version of Android, which in day-to-day -day use is not bad. As in, we're talking about devices that are between 70 and 80 pounds, under 100 pounds. You have a pretty clean Android version with a few extra, uh, few extra things in terms of being able to customize it. So it's very close to the Google experience of Android, but you'll notice that the launcher is a bit more Spartan, and more importantly, you see that search bar has the little multitasking, uh, but multitasking or web app app, uh, app, which allows you to get into the Google ecosystem and using light or purely web apps because the devices are pretty clunky when it comes to native applications. Now, both devices have the Google Play Store, Google Messages by default. Um, I've just updated things on here, so it should be up to date. But overall, I would say the two devices in terms of basics are the same. The big difference being that on the Nokia 1.4 here, you get a much more responsive experience because in this case, you have two gigabytes of RAM paired with 32 gigabytes of in, inbuilt storage, which is expandable. But that two gigabytes of RAM really does make all the difference in terms of the day-to-day -day use of the device. In terms of gaming, I would not play any high-end games on either of these devices. But in terms of video watching, because there's a difference in screen size, the Nokia 1.3 in this case has a 5.7 inch display the Nokia 1.4 has a 6.5 inch display. And for things like YouTube, uh, it is a, a world apart. For some odd reason, the other thing is that you have YouTube Go on the Nokia 1.3 and the full fat or full, uh, full YouTube experience on the Nokia 1.4. Now, I don't know what the reason for this is. Uh, in terms of chipset, they're pretty much the same. They're both using the Qualcomm Snapdragon 215 chipset, but the Nokia 1.4 gets full fat YouTube. The Nokia 1.3 gets this glorified web app, which is uh, the, the YouTube Go experience. So I'm just going through the quick setup for YouTube Go. So it's denotated by the Go sign here. There's Chris, say hello to Chris. You've got the go sign there, whereas on the 1.4 you have full YouTube. So big, big difference here in terms of your overall experience. But as I was saying, the Nokia 1.4 has a same resolution screen, but it's much bigger and it's more than enough to enjoy most shows on Netflix, Amazon, uh, Prime Video, and whatever else you decide to watch. Uh, in terms of cameras, as I said, they both have uh, very basic cameras, 8 megapixel main sensors, but they both feature the 
Google Camera Go app. So it's an optimized, fine-tuned uh, version of the camera app from Google, which has some really cool features uh, for devices in this price range. Let's put it this way. The pictures don't suck as bad as they could do if they were, for example, uh, in use, if they were in use uh, of a traditional camera app, as you see on certain Alcatel and other affordable smartphones. So we have a full video on Camera Go on the Nokia 1.3 on the Tech Travel Geeks YouTube channel. We will be doing an overview of the camera and its performance in the full long-term review of the Nokia 1.4, so I do suggest you check those out when they're available. One thing to bear in mind is that both devices do not have 5G, not a big issue for many people, but more importantly, they don't have NFC. So you can't use these phones to tap and pay uh, using them to tap and pay or access public transit as you can with most smartphones. Uh, these don't have NFC, that's not something you can do. What they do have is an FM radio. If you use that courage port at the top and 3.5 millimeter uh, headphones, the headphones act as the antenna and you can get standard FM radio. Right then, I'm going to wrap up this comparison with one more key feature, uh, that is that battery. So on the Nokia 1.3, you have a 3000 milliamp hour lithium uh, polymer battery, which is removable. So you can buy spare batteries and if necessary, swap them in and out. Whereas on the Nokia 1.4, as we saw, there's no back to come off. There's not a removable battery, but it is a bigger 4000 milliamp hour battery. And paired with that very basic Qualcomm Snapdragon 215 chipset, um, in terms of battery life, these are both two-day phones. Even with heavy video streaming and uh, regular phone calls and a lot of messaging, these are two devices that can both take um, at least a day, if not two days, of use. The Nokia 1.4 is slightly better in my experience, but I've not used these uh, out of lockdown that much to be able to, to make that judgment. But overall, uh, you can see that this is definitely a big evolutionary jump for the Nokia 1 series. The Nokia 1.4 is definitely a move up. And that's probably in response to the fact there are smartphones from companies like Doji and Eulophone, which are starting to move into this territory and do very well. So one thing to be aware of, um, as I said, software updates are not what Nokia promises, especially on the, four seri or the fourth generation of smartphones they've released. I will probably do a dedicated video on that because I'm very disappointed in Nokia. Uh, as you saw, we're at the end of June 2021 and I have a February patch on this. Uh, my Doji smartphones have more recent patches than this Nokia 1.4 has. But anyway, that's a rant for another video. Right then, um, if you have any other questions, if you'd like to know more about uh, the Nokia 1.4 or the Nokia 1.3, feel free to leave a comment in the section below. If you don't already, please do subscribe to the Tech Travel Geeks. And if you're watching this video before the 3rd of July 2021, check out the giveaway. We're giving away one of the Nokia uh, 1.4 devices, brand new in box, not a review device. Uh, this is a, a giveaway we're doing to to reward our audience for and thank them for uh, watching Tech Travel Geeks videos about Nokia smartphones. But for now, thanks for watching and goodbye from me.